I think that's the type of question that's a better question to ask than, well, which OS is going to win in the war and, and this type of thing. You look at the ecosystem and say, okay, what technology, service, skill set is available for me? And look at that as the merit of whether or not you yourself would participate in that conversation and community. From a business perspective, I, I'll just say simply, it's about not having and working with companies who have unwieldy control point business practices. So in, in that way, I think it's very difficult to have an ecosystem that does one simple thing when you have a lot of companies in there in the control point mode. And that one simple thing is, can you invest and sustain returns on that investment? If you took your savings while you're sitting in a dorm room or staying in the back of your brother's apartment somewhere, you need to be able to sustain a return on that investment. If you're a company investing billions in a particular strategy, or a work group and department investing millions or hundreds of thousands, you need to be able to sustain a return on that investment. And when you're dealing with a company that has a control point practice, you have to be very, very weary of whether or not you're ever going to be able to return. You'll be able to invest, and it'll be great for two or three years, and it'll be really exciting, and a really fun ride, but you'll get nowhere. So you have to be very careful in that context, and in this way, we're responsible for being shepherds of a very different type of business practice. I've mentioned our footprint. I've mentioned some about our philosophies and where we're going. And I want to I encourage you to do one additional thing here. I, I want you to test what I'm talking about in some of this context. Not just test others, test us, and be a little bit careful. I say that because if you go to Symbian DevCo as a, as a Twitter channel and as a feed, if you go and start participating in the dialogue at our site and with some other areas of our online presence, you'll find something. We're very actively participating in this age of conversation. You have to be careful because we are listening to you. We will change business practices and work with others to change their business practices if it's in your favor. We will help companies with different technologies get in and be a part of our community more so than others if that is what you feel you need to be active in the community. And in this way, you have a tremendous opportunity. You, as in anybody who has a motivation or interest in any company that has a motivation or interest. You have an opportunity to come in and make it your platform, your ecosystem, and in effect, to do something that I think is quite unique. Which is, in this era, in this renaissance we're going through, the best opportunity is one where we take a future that's going to happen anyway, something that's going to happen in three to five years in terms of enriching a consumer experience, and we can pull it in a little bit closer. If we work together to do it, if we're distant to each other, if we're unconventional about our approach, if we enable those who are passionate and have value to bring to the products and services we create, you will be able to realize that future a little bit sooner. And that benefits all of us. That's what I had to say today. Thank you. Thank you. That's fascinating. Any questions? We have time for a couple, I think, in front of you. Uh, David Mayer from ZD Net UK. Um, I, uh, I, I take. Uh, I know that you don't want to, to have a question about which browser, uh, which OS is going to win, rather. Um, but you, last slide you had up there before that was was a comparison between the different OSs and say some different strengths. But um, obviously, Symbian is lagging a little bit time-wise behind Android and and uh, Limo, etc., etc. Um, well, it, it, in terms of it hasn't been fully open sourced, it isn't, it isn't fully there, we're expecting that next year, if I'm correct. Um, what lessons have you taken from Android and, and Limo, I think, being the closest uh, uh, points of comparison that, uh, that we're going to see come into play with the final uh, open source of you? 
So we, we haven't taken lessons from Android. In fact, it would be my view that they should take some from us. Um, but that's, that's only part of the answer, right? What we have done and what we're very open to is, is you know, we're frankly, like with any startup, we're in a learning mode. Um, and we, we have for some time, before the formation of the, of the business even, um, we've had a collection of leaders, employees, and others who have been working with the guys at, at Limo, working with the guys at Eclipse, at Mozilla, um, and, and other open source organizations, and, and trying to figure out, okay, what worked, what didn't, uh, what practices worked, what didn't, how strong is your community, did you do something specific there to help them out? And, and things of that nature. So, um, you, you know, it's Eclipse, Mozilla, some, some Limo to some degree, the Linux Foundation where, where Jim's at and the others. Um, those are the types of organizations we've thus far taken, taken some of our marketplace lessons from. Which lessons? Which? <laughs> well, I, there's, let me highlight in terms of which lessons first by saying that what we're doing is very different. That a lot of the open source movements and, and, and organizations um, are doing so in a greenfield fashion. They, they have an open canvas by which they're letting the community go out and create. Now, Symbian, we're doing something a bit more ambitious and, and also very challenging, which, which is taking an existing, I would argue, de facto standard in smartphone and converged products and going open with that. So you're taking eight to 10 years worth of mature, object-oriented software code that runs in all of these products in very vertical and horizontal ways um, under, I mean, there are hundreds of licensing schemes and relationships embedded in that, in that code and, and asset as well and, and going over with that. So as a result, the lessons we're taking um, have to do with, you know, how did you deal with some basic or fundamental IP issues? How did you deal with distribution issues concerning different license schemes? whether they be considered open license schemes or, or otherwise. How did you deal with you know, inclusion of certain businesses um, that do practice some very proprietary practices or have inconsistent business models? Um, you know, what the Eclipse guys have done with, in working with IBM, it's, it's tough to say if, in terms of one of the things we've learned and studied, it's tough to say if Eclipse um, influenced IBM more or IBM influenced the Eclipse or. I, I really think it came into IBM. And so in this way, we've also taken a lot of lessons there about how you um, work to influence and engage and align with companies of that size and that nature. Because we have Nokia, Samsung, Sony Ericsson, a list of large, large companies where we need to do some of the same. I hope that's a, a little better answer. Great. Well, thank you again, Lee. You're welcome. Moving on to our 